right, I'll hit the ground running on this with it being only um, uh, 10 minutes. What did Cheddar Man look like? We don't know for certain. Why does it matter? It shouldn't, but it does. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> um, I'll go back to the first point in a minute. Um, so, um, uh, I mean, this, this kind of relates a bit to that, that Brexit paper that's come up a few times by Kenny Brophy that came out recently about... Um, uh, that it, we, would, we would all like to uh, live in an idealised position where we and, and, and the public all understood the ideas about ancestry and to some extent nationhood as well as um, being complex things that, were, that, that, that are related to ancestry and that are fed by things like ancestry but also um, uh, are involved uh, with uh, lots of other things and, and, and that we, we understand these things in, in, in a modern context and aren't re, um, sort of using... Uh, very uh, historical or archaeological, uh, 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 most appropriate historical or archaeological arguments to, to, to construct those things. But uh, particularly with heritage and to some extent with nationhood as well, we know that that um, uh, isn't the case. I mean, in the first instance, you've got um, uh, far right um, um, nationalistic ideas that the, 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 the ancestry and heritage are. are um, uh, well, ancestry defines your heritage and defines your nationhood um, in, an ex in a completely exclusive way. But I mean, even on, on the public at large, the way that uh, I would say the way that, that heritage is thought, heritage particularly is thought about, not so much nationhood anymore, I, I would hope, maybe being too optimistic there, but um, heritage is thought of is very much linked to um, ideas about ancestry, and particularly that people like us and, um, and our ancestors. Um, and, 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 and in a sense, you, you, because of that and, and, and that sort of implicit linkage, um, some of the things that uh, come up in the past um, which sort of challenge these views are useful and in terms of the, 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 um, uh, uh, this, the, the session, in terms of, you know, we can reason all we like about the fact that, um, and try and explain rationally why, um, you know, um, we, we shouldn't be defining heritage exclusively by our biology, but then... And, and, and wish that that was the idealised case, but actually, when you when, when these examples come up to actually show what a ridiculous idea it is, you know, I think that's a powerful way of actually jolting uh, the public and, and sort of uh, science as a way of uh, of uh, uh, actually the public themselves sort of contemplating sort of theoretical relationships between between themselves and the, the deep past and uh, heritage and ancestry. So going back to Cheddar Man himself, so he was really sequenced as part of uh, his. We did the DNA analysis in this part of a much broader topic, looking at the Mesolithic Neolithic transition in Britain. Um, and it, uh, this is a PCA, so what you've got is modern uh, populations here, ancient populations here and here. Uh, Cheddar Man, uh, basically he clusters, uh, it, it basically um, um, displays the similarity and differences between modern and ancient populations. So uh, Cheddar Man is over here with other Mesolithic, uh, what are called Western hunter-gatherers um, from Europe, uh, and all the black dots are... Um, um, uh, Neolithic farmers from from Britain um, and of course with other Neolithic farmers from Europe um, and uh, what this kind of represents is that well first of all the, 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 the Mesolithic populations of Europe are kind of exist outside the variation that you see in Europe today they were uh, genetically a, a very different population uh, and this is because through prehistory um, you get in, in Europe you get the uh, amalgamation of three genetically distinct populations so uh, it, when they're in isolation, these populations are as different from each other as, as uh, in terms of genetic distances, uh, uh, as Europeans are from uh, East Asian peoples today. So these are very diverse populations that come <coughs> mixed together. So the, the first one is the uh, Neolithic populations that, that come into Europe from the Near East, which, which uh, look more like this, uh, which cluster around uh, modern-day uh, uh, Sardinians. And then uh, uh, in the beginning <coughs> of the Bronze Age, you get um, populations that derive from the Russian steppe, which then drags, uh, they're actually up there somewhere, and that drags uh, uh, sort of the, in, into it broadly the mod, uh, somewhere around the modern populations of Europe. Um, so this has meant that, that in Britain and generally, and with the Beaker period as well in Britain, that's when that um, step ancestry gets introduced. And what that means is that, uh, that, that uh, uh, the ideas of uh, biological continuity in prehistory have really just been um, um, uh, dissolved by... Um, by these ancient DNA studies, that, uh, uh, that there is no no continuity really um, through these periods. Um, in terms of looking at the pigmentation <coughs> and the, and the, and, the, and the, uh, populations occupying places in the past are genetically quite distinct from um, those that occupy those places now. 
uh, looking specifically at uh, Mesolithic Europeans. So when they looked, so they looked for these uh, two genetic variants which are linked to skin pigmentation in um, uh, in uh, Europeans today and um, are very highly correlated with um, the very pale skin that you get in, in modern Europeans. And what they found initially when they looked at Mesolithic Europeans is that they had the ancestral version of those uh, genetic variants, which meant that they, they didn't have the, the very pale skin. But, I mean, this is quite non-specific in that there's a whole variety of skin tones that people who do not have those genetic variants have, in particular people in East Asia, uh, populations in East Asia don't have those variants, yet still have very, very pale skin. So what we did with Ched and Man uh, was um, look at, use this model which used 36 variants, it actually looked at more than that, but then found that 36 was enough to be able to predict um, uh, skin pigmentation in modern populations, modern global populations, uh, with some, um, uh, with a good degree of accuracy. And we applied that model to Cheddar Man and uh, it was basically split into this um, scale called the uh, Fitzpatrick scale, which looks at, uh, which, is, which has these sort of very distinct, I mean, very crude, but uh, distinct phases. And uh, the range that, that, that was produced from this effect based on modern, the, the kind of similar kinds of alleles in modern, um, genetic variants in modern populations was that you would have had dark to dark to black skin and probably more like just dark. You also probably didn't have the darker skin tone that you, um, that you see. Um, after this uh, finding came out, there was, some, there was this article in New Scientist which um, <coughs> um, sort of said that dark skin but fine may not be true, which I think is an interesting turn of phrase because there's, lot, <laughs> there's lots of things that might not be true. Uh, and uh, all it described was that, uh, all, I mean, that the first criticism was that um, this was a probabilist, probabilistic method and uh, uh, we didn't know what Cheddar Man's skin pigment was for certain. Well, obviously, it's like unless we find a, a mummified uh, mesolithic person, it's like we're never going to know exactly what colour uh, Cheddar Man's skin pigment was. Um, and the fact that we used a probabilistic method, you know, it was completely set out in, in, in what we did. So that seemed like a weird... Um, thing to uh, complain about. But um, they also mentioned the fact that um, uh, there are, we don't necessarily have, uh, know about all the variants that are linked to skin pigmentation. Perhaps Cheddar Man would have had uh, different um, variants that aren't found in modern European populations that would have conferred a lighter skin pigmentation on him. That's fine, but then, then you're saying essentially that Cheddar Man has a completely different ar genetic architecture of skin pigmentation than modern Europeans have, like a, 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 a genetic architecture of skin pigmentation that doesn't really exist in global populations anymore, which is even weirder, really, than imagine dark skin, as far as I'm concerned. I think, there, well, there are reasons why it's unlikely that that's the case, but I don't have time to go into them now. Um, anyway, so this obviously caused a big reaction in terms of talking about why it's important, it, um, um, uh, it, uh, the, 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 why it matters. I mean, and the, the reaction really showed why it matters. So, I mean, the fact that BBC did a news report on just the, the, the Twitter response rather than just the story itself suggests that it was something, I mean, it's easy to look at Twitter, you know, Twitter isn't, isn't the world, and it's easy to look at Twitter and find reactions, but it, it's fun to do so. So you, you kind of, this is kind of like a good representation of some of the reactions that you've got here. So you get um, David Lammy talking about how, you know, um, he's a guy who was born in Britain, was raised in Britain, to all intents and purposes, he's British, and specifically English, um, but obviously throughout his life, because of his ancestry, because of his appearance, he's been told or made to feel that he doesn't belong um, or that it, it, he shouldn't be here. So for him to see Cheddar Man and see that all those people that were telling him that, 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 that they were here long before him and that he should have been here, um, but he sees that, that actually the evidence is completely debunks that idea, I think shows how sometimes powerful these, uh, that these scientific methods are and will continue to be in sort of understanding and redefining uh, uh, um, heritage. Uh, you also get sort of uh, the other side of things where, uh, I mean, this is pretty extreme and, and disgusting, but uh, uh, one of the, a guy, tried, well, who was a group of people that tried to out one of the researchers on um, our paper is Jewish because they thought that the whole thing was a, a liberal Jewish conspiracy. Um, and they, they thought he was Jewish because his surname was Dietmann, and it's a German surname, um, which they associated with him being Jewish. Uh, Johan is not Jewish. Um, he has a German surname because he's German. <laughs> um, but, but this, and then, this was obviously the, the, the idea, I mean, a lot of people, what was funny was that all these people were accusing us of, uh, of uh, left-wing bias, that it was just a left-wing um, 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 sort of stunt, um, and that our politics were played to see when all of these accounts were very clearly had 
white right wing alt right um, affiliations. They all wore their political affiliations on the sleeve, and yet we were the ones who were uh, sh- showing um, showing our bias. But yeah, sort of snowflake lefty feminist liberals involved in this project saw me. What I like about this idea is how much power they give me over this analysis. So I'm an archaeologist working on this project um, with geneticists, and so we get so what, what I, they're imagining here that they get the results, and then I come along and say. You know, could you just make it a little bit more walk? You know, I mean, I like it and everything, but, you know, I really would like to impose my liberal left-wing bias on this. And the geneticists are going to say, are going to say, yeah, man, I mean, you know, it's only my career and my scientific reputation at risk. Of course we can just, like, sting this. Of course, mate. It's like, um, it's, it's just, it just really shows how ridiculous this whole thing is. But it shows the reason why it's such a big reaction was because it creates this schism in people's ideas about continuity and what, what people look like and how they relate to modern people in the past and this idea of ancestry and heritage. And um, I don't think necessarily our discourse, uh, and, and, and it undermines sort of things, because I, I think sometimes this idea of uh, our ancestors is, is, is promoted too much by archaeologists and sometimes ways to blame for it. I've used the phrase, that things like saying our ancestors when we're talking about pe- people in the past. Um, and I know that it's supposed to be a way of, of directly connecting people with the past by talking about the um, your ancestors did this, your ancestors did that. But when you're talking about a, 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 um, a, um, a field that is is very white, and then everyone's banging on about their ancestors, you know, from an outsider who isn't white and looking into this, that's not going to look like a particularly um, um, sort of inclusive uh, place to be. So I think we have to get away from going on talking about our ancestors. I mean, I don't want to name any names. And the thing is, is that like I said, the idea of these people being our an- our ancestors is is not true, really. And also, um, so um, again, Ancient DNA is, is writing a, a rough shot over ideas of, uh, of continuity anyway. That shouldn't matter, but it does because of these implicit ideas that are already uh, uh, in the population. And I think a lot of these high-impact studies are forcing people to confront these yeah, populations about the past, um, uh, these ideas about the past. Um, and the thing is, is that... It, I mean, even, even even just on a even without all the the, the prehistory. Sorry, are we, are we over time here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right, right, okay. So basically, if you're a European, if you have recent ancestry in Europe, um, uh, by, the, by the time you get back to the ninth century, you all have the same ancestors. Um, your ancestors distributed from a specific, uh, uh, not from a specific place in Europe. Similarly, you don't have to go much further back in time and um, everybody in the entire world has the same ancestors. It's only a few thousand years in the past. So the idea of any individual having an explicit ancestry in a, in a particular place is always shallow. So um, these ideas of identity particularly and heritage being specifically associated with your deep connection in a particular place are, are kind of... We shouldn't have to debunk these because that should be obvious anyway, that that's not the way that, that we should be thinking about these things in, in the present. But even if you do, it's, it's pretty, um, it's pretty uh, flawed. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. I'll just leave those up because uh, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>